The Nintendo 64 controller always baffled me. Seriously, who designed this and thought it was a good idea? It looks like a bootleg! So naturally, it was turned into one. Around 2003 to 2004, the Power Player Super Joy hit the scene. Its origin is unknown, but it was sold all over the world. North America, Brazil, Europe, Asia, Australia, frickin' Saturn for all I know. This is apparently one of the most notorious and popular products within the bootleg community. It was a simple plug and play, meaning you hook up the N64 controller directly into the TV. It came with another controller resembling the six button version for the Sega Genesis meant for multiplayer. And a gun, because why not? No bootleg game console is complete without a gun. So far, all of this is pretty basic stuff. Company makes bootleg and we suffer for it. But here's where the story takes an interesting turn. On December 16th, 2004, the FBI executed search warrants at two kiosks at the Mall of America in Minnesota. Nintendo had the freaking FBI launch into this mall, presumably coming down from cables and wielding machine guns. Man, the people who just went to the mall for their everyday run to Hot Topic sure were in for a surprise. The FBI also searched storage units rented by one Jonathan Cohen, an owner of Perfect Deal LLC of Miami, Florida. Here's what he did. He basically bought these consoles for $7 and resold them for $60 at the mall. These storage units apparently contained over 60,000 units of N64 bootleg consoles. Meaning, if we do some math, he bought $420,000 worth of bootlegs, and if he managed to somehow sell them all, he would have made $4 million! This is the craziest bootleg story I've ever heard. In November 2005, Cohen was sentenced to five years in federal prison and was required to run ads in mall magazines to inform the public of how he sold pirated games at the Mall of America. Nintendo does not play around. Not only did they cuck this guy of becoming a millionaire, they threw him in prison for five years and they also made him issue a public apology in written form to expose how much of a fraud he was. Now this is where the interesting history of the Power Player Super Joy comes to an end, right? No, because now we're heading on a plane to Italy, where there was a 10 minute infomercial advertising this bootleg nonsense. This is Roberto Artigiani. From what I can tell, he's basically Italy's Billy Mays. Hi, Billy Mays here for the Big City Slider Station! So I instantly love him. He's obviously speaking Italian, so I have no idea what he's saying. I imagine he was given some kind of script to make this console sound as legit as possible. This is definitely one of those ads that would play at 3 in the morning, and you would only ever see it accidentally if you fell asleep on the couch watching cartoons. You slowly start to wake up in a daze, only to realize ah, it's Italian Billy Mays! Hi, Billy Mays here! I'm sure he tried his best. He sounds super convincing, but he's showing us a bunch of NES games in 2004. I, I don't think Italians cared about this. And that was just the history of this abomination. It definitely has a more interesting backstory than most of these bootlegs that we check out, where most of them are just made in some kind of Czechoslovakian basement. But without further ado, let's check out the Power Play Joy Supermax, whatever it's called. 30 and 1, huh? It's never easy. Game number 1 is Primitive Man. What, caveman not good enough for you? It's a 2D side scroller where a caveman runs around the streets of New York. Already off to a terrible start, I see. It's just so. whatever. Incredibly mediocre and forgettable. Up next is Superhero! Oh my gosh, who are you? I need a superhero myself to save me from your ugliness. Once again, it's a perfectly fine to a below fine side scroller. Bootleg Buzz Lightyear over here punches stuff, shoots lasers, and turns into a car. I guess they were going for some kind of Mega Man thing with multiple abilities. And yeah, I can see the similarities. Ah, dang it, I died. Oh no, this is horrible! Help? I, I wish I could, buddy. Wonder Rabbit! What a cute little rabbit he is. Oh. 
Rabbits can't do that. Also, hey, we're playing Super Mario Bros. 2. Otherwise known as Doki Doki Pan- AGAIN! The game is just a whatever side-scroller. I'm starting to sense a pattern. Game number four! Quiz! Well, if my C- average in school ever had a use, it's now! Which country will host the next World Cup tournament? How am I supposed to know that? I don't even know what year specifically this game was being made in! What word does not belong in the group in each of the following questions? Crayon, pencil, pen, or paper? What are you asking me?! Alright, well I haven't felt this stupid since I was in actual school, so let's move on. The Archer! You play as... an archer! And shoot arrows at these golem demons. It's pretty fun and a nice change of pace. Toy Bricks! If by Toy Bricks you meant Microsoft Paint on an NES, then yeah, Toy Bricks! When you try to draw on a D-pad, nobody ever wins. Halley Who! I have no idea what the hell is going on. Arena! Okay, now this game here is literally impossible! These warriors are trying to enter this castle, and you're the only line of defense. A pretty big job if I do say so myself. So, what does the kingdom equip you with to handle such a dangerous task? A dinky little spear! Seriously, you'll have multiple attackers coming your way, but you can only attack them when they're in range of your tiny poke weapon. Like, while I'm over here taking out this guy, this one over here can just sneak on in. I hate this. Okay, next game is Pentabase. It's the same concept as the last game, but here we can actually shoot. Shoot these cute pink jellies with our... Our pentagram. Across river. It's Frogger. Man, these games are so lame and boring. The backstory of this console was way more interesting than the console itself. Like, did the FBI really have to raid the mall for this? Here's a racing game. It sucks. Here's Tetris. It's Tetris. Oh, it's Minesweeper! It's been 20 years since I first played Minesweeper on a Windows XP computer, and I still don't know the rules! Here's a game called Angel. An angel shoots down candy in front of the beanstalk from Jack and the Beanstalk, and you take control of this mummy to collect as much candy as possible. The concept of the game is fine, but what drugs were you on when you thought a mummy and an angel were the perfect duo? Now this next game, I'm gonna be honest, is pretty interesting. Mini Movies! You're given five different stories to choose from. Once you choose your story, you then have six panels that are shown to you and you have to put them in order, remembering which scene was which number. Once you do that, you then get to watch... a mini movie. It's nothing too crazy or anything, but the fact that there's cutscenes and movies on this thing is a charming enough change of pace. I mean, look at this cute frog. He's doing great! Where's his Oscar nomination? Now, there are still 15 other games on this thing. I know. How are we not done yet? Luckily, however, the last 15 games are pretty terrible. Like, wow, would you never want to play these games at any time? There's a slot machine. Okay, you can play blackjack, a submarine game, some kind of math game. It really feels like they gave up halfway through. Like the developers thought this was a 15-in-1 console, and then Jerry from Accounting was like, actually, there's 30 games. And everyone freaked out, being like, holy crap, this thing comes out tomorrow! And because of that, we're left with stuff like this. And that was the Power Player Super Joy. Kind of anticlimactic. The console and games themselves are pretty lackluster, with nothing too memorable of note. I actually came across this bootleg a few years ago, but didn't want to make a video on it. Because... It's BORING! It wasn't until I found out about its crazy history involving the FBI that I decided to give it another shot. There are so many weird issues with this console. A lot of them were known to overheat and straight up melt. You need four AA batteries to run this thing, but the battery pack was more often than not way too small, so the batteries would barely fit, meaning you couldn't put the lid on it and keep it shut, so the batteries would sometimes fall out, powering off the console. This thing 
sucks. And the more we talk about it, the more I start to understand why the FBI raided the mall to steal them away. But wait, I have one of these things. Does that mean... FBI, open up! Uh-oh.